Well, good morning, Redeemer. I wanted to share some words with you today. Today is Monday, Thursday, or Holy Thursday, uh, whatever kind of direction you want to head with that. Um, and it's honestly one of my favorite days out of the year, guys. Um, there is such, such cool symbolism um, and, and such some awesome stories of Jesus uh, that we get to participate in. And I hope that you guys tune in later for our live stream um, tonight, this afternoon, evening, um, to uh, take take part in that. And I hope that you're ready to uh, interact with Pastor Coughlin um, and myself on, on some of those um, interactive pieces that we sent out to you. Um, but before then, um, before Jesus came to be in the upper room, uh, he sat at a different table and had a different family conversation that I wanted to share with you today. And, and it's one from Luke chapter 7. Uh, this, this account is in all the Gospels. And it was one that was shared with us not that long ago in our lectionary lessons. Uh, but I wanted to give this uh, an opportunity for you guys to interact with this one. From Luke chapter 7, starting at verse 36. Now one of the Pharisees invited Jesus to have dinner with him. So he went to the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. When a woman who had lived a sinful life in that town learned that Jesus was eating at the Pharisee's house, she brought an alabaster jar of perfume. And as she stood behind him at his feet weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears. Then she wiped them with her hair, kissed them, and poured perfume on them. When the Pharisee who had been invited, who had invited him, saw this, he said to himself, If this man were a prophet, he would know who is touching him and what kind of woman she is that she is a sinner jesus answered him simon i have something to tell you tell me teacher he said two men owed money to a certain money lender one owed him 500 denarii the other 50. neither of them had the money to pay him back so he canceled the debts of both now which of them will love him more simon replied i suppose the one with the bigger debt canceled you have judged correctly, Jesus said. Then he turned to the woman and said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I came into your house. You did not give me any water for my feet. But she wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss, but this woman from the time I entered has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not put oil on my head, but she has poured perfume on my feet. Therefore I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven. For she loved much. But he who has been forgiven little, loves little. Then Jesus said to her, Your sins are forgiven. The other guests began to say among themselves, Who is this who even forgives sins? Jesus said to the woman, Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. And we arrive at Monday, Thursday, completely different setting. And instead of Jesus being served, and being waited on. He takes off his robe and waits on his disciples. He washes their feet. The hands of the Savior, the Almighty, Almighty God, takes the role of a servant. It's a beautiful story. But I want to point us back to this one for us. We know how the rest of this week goes. We know how tonight leads into sorrow for Good Friday. We know that. We know what Jesus went through on our behalf. And we know the joy of Easter, because we live as Easter Christians, joyful and triumphant, knowing that death is defeated, and it cannot hold us. But how do we live our lives? each and every day. And my hope for you is that you would live as this woman, forgiven, <laughs> loved, and serving Jesus. So today, you will have opportunities to serve. You'll have opportunities to be served. And my hope is that you will see the feet of Jesus in those that serve you. And to see the feet of Jesus knows that you serve. That you 
can enjoy the times where God has given you people to be in your life, to help you, that you can enjoy the times that God has given people in your life for you to serve. Um, and I've got a song for you, and due to some copyright things, probably not going to share it directly. Um, I thought about it and was going to, but I'm going to, you know, use some better judgment here. Um, if you're familiar with the song Alabaster by Ren Collective, um, it's, it comes from this particular section of scripture. Um, but the words go like this. I will bow my life at your feet. At your feet. My lips, so lost for words, will kiss your feet. And that's my hope for you today, as you start to see the passion of our Savior, the one who came for us, who died for us, who suffered for us, that you would be able to see and serve, see the world around you and serve. Um, and I hope in all this that your Holy Week would be blessed uh, by Jesus and that your family would be able to uh, enjoy some time uh, together in some way, uh, whether that's virtual or not, um, or that you live in the same house and you have to put up with each other even more time. Uh, but Jesus is, is with you in that. And he still invites us to walk like him, to serve like him. Um, and I'm asking you guys to, uh, to live that um, in joy the Easter joy that we will certainly share together here soon. So if you guys would, um, would pray with me. Lord Jesus, uh, we, we come into uh, these, these high holy days unable to gather as a congregation in the same way that we have in the past. Without physically seeing each other, Lord, it's easy to feel alone. But we know that you are with us and that your Holy Spirit unites us um, beyond what we could ever imagine. Um, Jesus, as you come to the cross in these next days, as we rem remember that, um, help us also remember the joy of Easter. And, uh, and God, help us to, to serve our friends and our neighbors and our family as you would have us serve. In your name, Jesus, amen. Check out that song, guys, and I will see you at worship later.